And if you could just say, got it, uh, recording, we're recording this for you guys. But, um, but anyways, uh, I went to this money class at church and then they started teaching like an actual structure on paying down debt, paying down debt, um, is a foundation because that's, that's how you start building, uh, wealth. It's really hard to build wealth if you have, uh, debt, especially like the bad type of debt, you know, the good type of debt would be mortgages. But once you start doing, you know, all these, uh, car loans and credit cards and, uh, medical, that's when it gets really hard to start building your wealth. So here at our office, we're all about building wealth long term. Uh, so I'm very happy that you guys are on here. And let's get right into it. Um, okay, by the way, remember that the only way this works is if you guys actually go and do this. Okay. So step one is learning which what you're doing now. Step two is actually doing it. So this is uh, called how to eliminate debt and build your credit. Brought to you by everyone at the Leopard Tenwell group, powered by EXP. So everyone on here, whoever invited you, um, please thank them because, um, because uh, you know they put this on for you. We put this on for you. Uh, by the way, if you want a, a, the 2023 calendar of financial and real estate workshops, go ahead and scan this QR code. And some of the topics on the left-hand side, just some of them, tax benefits of owning real estate, first-time home buying, home selling 101, buying with military benefits, budgeting your way to a million. One of my favorite workshops, budgeting your way to a million. This is kind of like the, the premise workshop to that. And then there's ADUs for beginners and renting versus owning, uh, how to play Monopoly in real life, financial literacy for kids and, and way more workshops. So just scan this code and then you could get access to the future uh, workshops. There you go. Um, by the way, if you guys get something out of this tonight, by, it, it's free, obviously, brought to you for free. Please rate us, leave us a review. Last time we got, uh, for the Financial Literacy Workshop, we got a really awesome uh, couple of reviews, um, and which really helps us that way in the future when people wanna do business with us, you know, um, they trust us because they see reviews on Yelp or Google. So please, please don't forget to leave us a review. Uh, all right, so who's teaching this workshop tonight? Uh, uh, myself and a co-host I'll introduce in a bit, but this is me, born and raised in San Diego, started real estate uh, sales <clears throat> 2020, uh, 2002, so that's about 21 years ago. Full-time real estate agent, that's what I do for a living. I'm a property manager too. We have 33 um, people in our group and uh, I've helped hundreds of families um, teach a lot of financial literacy to kids and adults. Um, I've given six figures. I don't know exactly how much, but I've given a lot of money away. Uh, Self-made millionaire at the age of 32, and I don't have to work anymore. I have enough income coming in from my assets, from my real estate uh, properties that I own, 52 doors right here, 52 tenants paying me rent on a monthly basis. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm qualified here to, uh, to show you guys how to pay down some debt. All right, so we're gonna get right into it. Uh, debt is the number one wealth killer in America, period. Most people that don't have wealth is because they have debt, right? It's hard to have both at the same time. Um, when you pay, so the way it works is something like this. When you pay with cash, it always costs less. You actually save money slash make money by paying with cash. When you finance something, it always costs more. So cash on hand uh, uh, compared to carrying debt. All right, so this is just a concept of money to consider. It's very simple concept. So if you finance something, it's always going to cost you money. If you pay with cash, it's not going to cost you money to finance it. So therefore, it costs you less. Okay. By the way, at any time, feel free to ask me any questions in the chat. Um, and you could also unmute yourself. 
you know, if it's something that we're covering, you don't understand. Um, so let's talk about this. Example number one, you buy a car. If you finance a car for $40,000, uh, you put a $2,000 down payment, you finance it for 60 months, 5% interest rate, that's how much, let's say, it cost you a, a year and a half ago. Now it's changed. This is an old presentation. So the financing cost at 5% is about $34.53. Um, the true cost, okay, of buying this car isn't $40,000. It's $43,453. If you buy it cash, you buy it for $40,000, $40,000 down payment. You don't pay any interest, no financing charges. Now you save $3,453. Over 60 months, that's $57 a month that you're saving there in interest charges. Now, the cool part is you could go and invest this money on the right column here that we have. And you could invest it in the S&P 500, let's say the stock market over 60 months with, uh, if, you're, if you're putting in $57.55, which is your savings from not financing it, uh, you could earn $803.78 over, uh, that time so when you add the money that you that cost to finance right the 3453 dollars plus the 803 dollars that you earned by being an s p 500 and by the way the s p 500 over the last 50 years has given you anywhere between 8 to 11 percent on an annual basis um so you would actually save or earn about 4256 dollars so the true cost of buying cash car, you would have not paid 40,000 for it. You would have paid $35,743.22. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. If you finance the car on the left side, you would have paid 43,000. On the right side, under investing, it says the true cost is 35,000. So the difference on price is $7,700. Now, whether you know it or not, when you're financing cars or your clothes, when you go shopping and financing uh, the dental work that you got done um, or, you know, your kids' sports or whatever, you're always paying more money, but you really don't know. So rich people, what they do is they pay cash, they invest the money that they would have uh, paid for financing, and they keep getting you know, like the $7,700 over and over and over with different items. Does that make sense? So I just want to show you this simple concept where it shows that, you know, it's, it's probably not a good thing to just finance everything, right? And, and how much money really it, it, you're saving. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? And Vanessa, at any point too, have you seen any questions on Facebook? you could always, uh, of course, interrupt me. But I just want to show you guys that simple concept on how it works. But we don't even think about it. We just say, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's finance it or whatever. Now, an expert move would be to finance the car at 5.5%. And then with that money, you would have saved, let's say, the $40,000 of not paying cash. You would have gone and invested it somewhere else that's paying more than 5.5%. Okay? So that's like an expert move. Yeah, you could do that, but there's always risk to it, okay? Um, so we'll go back into the presentation. Hold on a second. I just want to make sure that... Uh... All right. Give me one quick second. Um, I'm trying to... Meanwhile, he's doing that. Any questions, guys? I don't see anything in the chat or on Facebook. All right. And then, so we're going to go over debt first. And then after that, we're going to go into credit. Okay. Um, let me just share my screen again. All right, here we go. So first part, debt. We have to understand it. All right. It looks like there's somebody's trying to get in. All right, here we go. So you guys can see this again. Now let's go into the second example. Second example is house. Again, this is no slide. $460,000 homes in San Diego don't exist anymore, but let's pretend you bought a $460,000 home. 
you put a, a down payment of 15,750. You financed it for 360 months, which is 30 years, and you pay a 3.75% interest rate. Again, now this is double, right? It's not 3.75%, but this is the example we have. So the financing costs over 30 years, you're paying $289,738 just to finance it. That doesn't include any principal payments or anything like that. That's just like straight financing uh, fees. So the true cost of buying this house is four sixty plus seven hundred forty nine thousand dollars over thirty years. It's almost you know you're paying a, a house and a half kind of. Now if you bought it cash, you would have bought it for four forty because we all know that if you're a cash buyer in real estate you could probably get a deal. Uh, so you pay a little bit less. Um, I don't know why I put four forty five there, but that's supposed to say four forty down payment. So there's no financing charges, money saved. You save $289,000 from just financing fees over 30 years. Now that equates to $804 a month. So let's pretend that you're saving $804 a month in interest over 30 years. You invest that $804 on an annual, on a, on a monthly basis over 30 years. And you put in the S and P 500, you would earn nine hundred and sixteen thousand dollars over thirty years. Then you add that nine hundred sixteen thousand to the uh, money that you would have paid in financing fees, two hundred eighty nine thousand. So you really saved one point two million dollars, or you made one point two million dollars. And you know they always say a penny saved is a penny earned. So this shows you what that saying means. The 289,000 represents how much money you would have saved from financing the home. And the 916,000 shows you how much you would have earned in the S&P 500 with that money, okay, 1.2 million. So what's the true cost of that home if you're buying it cash, right? Um, is it free? I don't know. That's a good question. It's a, it's a, uh, in theory, right? So, um, so now someone in the, in the chat asked S and P is stocks market. S and P is stock market. So what the S and P 500 is, it's, um, the top 500 companies in America. So Google, Apple, anything that you use around your house, Walmart, Costco, Target, right? When you go to the store, um, some car companies, Tesla's on there. So it's the five top 500 companies in America. So when you're putting money, let's say in this scenario, $804 into the S&P 500 every month, really what you're doing is you're betting on America. So you're betting that long-term America is going to do good. And, and you own a piece of the top 500 companies. So it's an index fund that owns 500, uh, the top companies in America. And um, over time, people have gotten really rich by betting on America, by investing into the S&P 500. Great question. Thank you for asking that. That way everybody kind of understands what I'm talking about. All right, cool. Let's go into the next one. Carrying debt. So don't do this. There's many people that I've met that have cash, cash at home, cash in the bank, um, that they're saving for a rainy day for an emergency. And they also have debt. They have credit card debt. They have uh, car loan debt, medical debt, okay? And they say, well, I feel like having cash because in case of an emergency, okay? Well, don't do that. What you should do is instead, you should use the $10,000 in this example in cash to pay your debt down to $5,000. So if you owe $15,000 and you have $10,000 cash, just use the cash to pay your debt. Now you have $5,000, right? Well, some people say, well, what about emergency funds? What about having enough money, you know, in emergency? Well, guess what? Every, every type of emergency I could think of involves, you could, you could pay with a credit card. So you could get back in debt if you want, if there's a big emergency. Uh, but if you just have cash, not only are you 
paying interest on, on the debt that you do have, but you're also um, losing money through inflation, which is crazy. All right. So this is why you shouldn't do it. If you have $15,000 in credit card debt, right now the annual interest rate average is about 20.4%. That means that you're paying $3,060 a year to keep that $10,000 cash in your pocket or under your mattress or at home or in your bank account. Um, it doesn't make any sense. And this is a concept that I want everybody here to understand and to think about your personal situation right now. If you have cash sitting around that you haven't touched in a long time, savings, and you have debt, like credit card debt, for example, that's that you're paying 20.4%, right? There's a lot of realtors that have uh, payment plans with the IRS and the IRS is charging 8% just to have a payment plan with them to that money that you owe them. So if you have any type of those payment plans where you're paying 8%, 10%, 20%, just use the cash to pay it down. Start saving the, the interest that you're paying. So in this example, again, $15,000 credit card debt at 20.4% annual interest rate means you're paying $3,060 a year just to borrow $10,000 from them that you have already in your pocket. Questions, comments about this specific uh, example? Because this is huge to understand. I don't want anybody not to understand this. I want everyone to understand this. Anyone? Don't be shy either, um, if, in case you don't understand it. I hope that there's some light bulbs going off saying, oh, wow, like, you know, I need to make some moves with my money, right? All right, cool. I'll ask something just to like, yeah. for the sake of asking. Um, so your example says, instead you should use the 10,000 in cash to pay your debt down. Or the obviously if say someone just had 5,000, but they have 10,000 in debt, they should huh? still yeah. like in that case, they should still use that money to pay down the debt and then just end up with 5,000 in debt. Basically, don't have savings until you don't have debt. Don't start saving money until you don't have any more debt. Correct. Yeah, okay. it's hard to start saving money, Vanessa, if you have debt. It doesn't make any sense. It's like people that tell me, well, I want to invest in the, the stock market or I want to invest in gold or precious metals or um, other things um, when they have all this debt. It's like, no, pay off your debt first. So even if you only have 5,000, just use up the cash. Like, what do you need cash for? You really think about it. Nowadays, you have to go into the coffee shop and before you pay your coffee, you, you got to ask them, hey, do you accept cash? And you're going to hear some places say, no, we don't accept cash. So you don't need that cash. Just go, um, you know, pay down your debt with that cash and then use your credit card if you need money. Right. But it doesn't make sense, Vanessa, to have, you know, to owe the credit card company and pay 20 percent just to borrow money you already have. You already have that money. Don't pay 20 percent to borrow that money <laughs> if you already have it. Um, okay. All right. Great question. OK, so here's bad debt, a.k.a. liabilities on the left side, cars, quads, jet skis, credit cards, clothing, Macy's, Nordstrom's, et cetera. Jewelry, Jared, Zells, Tiffany, um, any type of debt that really isn't putting money in your pocket, that isn't tied to a liability, okay? On the right side, it says not so bad debt, aka assets. So if you have debt or loans against your real estate, that's good most likely, right? Because everybody, especially right now, has very low interest rates. That's that's actually a, an asset believe it or not and then the second thing is businesses so if you open up a business if you have your own personal business and you're taking out lines of credit against your business or business loans that's a that that's not bad debt either because in a perfect world obviously you're you're making money from your business so it's okay to borrow money for your business um 
on the left hand side, can anyone think of any other bad debts that are out there? Um, maybe medical bills. What else? Can anyone think of something that I, 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 I'm not thinking of right now as far as bad debt? Let me see. Personal loans. Yeah. yeah. Personal loans. Student loans. Mm -hmm. Student loans. Um, yeah. You know, I think everyone who has debt that isn't real estate debt or business debt, I think it's a good uh, personal jet, right? <laughs> I think um, whoever doesn't have, or sorry, whoever has these types of debts, you should definitely look at how much cash you have, look at how much interest you're paying on these debts. And then from there, I think you guys should start making decisions to move money move cash over to pay off some of these debts, pay them down. Someone also said, or Kate Goodwin said, my personal jet. Your personal jet. See, there you go. Now you got to go turn it back now that you, uh, that you bought it. Um, all right. So here we go. The, the plan, <laughs> the plan to create wealth is to eliminate all debt. Okay. That's how we're going to, that's the plan guys, starting with the bad debt first. So you're going to start with this stuff first. And then you're going to pay off any loans you have over here on the right side, if you want to live that way. And I think you guys should call me before you do. Um, by the way, a lot of these, when, when I said earlier in the introduction that um, when I took that money class at church, um, we read a book uh, called the Dave Ramsey. Um, Dave Ramsey wrote it. It's called, uh, sheesh, I'm having a blank on the book. Um, but this is where I got all this stuff from, right? It's a great book. Vanessa, maybe if you could look it up for me. Um, ways to eliminate debt. This is the ways that you could eliminate debt. Number one, create a family budget. So write this down. If you guys hear, you have to create a family budget in order to pay down uh, debt and get ahead in life, all right? What that consists of for me is the first Sunday of every month, I print, I, I write down all the money that I earned that the previous month. So this September, I wrote down what I made in, in August. And then I wrote down all my expenses. So I wrote down, you know, how much for my dog food, how much for my food, how much for uh, my house payment, uh, how much for my car payment. Like uh, I wrote down all the expenses, the farmer's market, my haircuts. Okay. And then i had a profit and I said, okay, this is how much money I had left over. So this is how much money I saved. And I do this every single month and every single month I see exactly my net worth. I calculate my net worth. And over time, the goal is to have your net worth just go up and up and up and up. All right. Now, uh, a pro tip is when you do this, do it with your spouse, do it with your significant other, whoever you live with. Um, why? Because it's like, uh, it's like trying to eat good, right? Or trying to eat well. If there's two of you and only one of you is dedicated to eating well, guess what? Sooner or later, if the other person is you know, bringing in food that isn't healthy, you're going to start eating it, right? But if both people are committed and both people are, are going to a grocery store and buying healthy food, then it's a lot easier. Um, and the last thing that you want don't want to happen is when you have your own budget and you say, okay, this is how much money I'm going to spend for groceries, this is how much money I'm going to have for going out or eating out, then all of a sudden, um, you don't want your, your significant other uh, to say, well, uh, let's go do this. And then you go, no. And then they, they look at you like, dude, you're a party pooper. Like, why not? You know? So you want to be on the same page. This tip is, is a great tip. But I think a lot of people that I've told this to kind of push back and they go, oh my gosh, how am I going to talk money with, with my husband or wife, significant other, right? Like they don't, it, money's an interesting thing people don't really want to talk about, but it's super important if you want to create wealth. Second way to eliminate debt is use cash on hand to pay off all debt. Third way, stop bringing on new debt, all right? Stop swiping the card. Uh, fourth, use the envelope system, which we'll go over in a bit. 
Uh, five, pay cash instead of credit. Um, why? Why, why should you use cash instead of credit? Well, this is at the farmer's markets or any mom and pop shops where they charge you a fee. So whenever I go to a farmer's market, and by the way, I have a lot of money and I still do this. I go into a farmer's market and I buy like, a, you know, some, some fruits and I go, do you charge? If I use my card, do you charge an extra fee? And they go, yeah, there's a 50 cent fee. And then from there I go, okay. And I pay cash instead. And they say, there's no extra fee. And I said, then I ask, well, will I save money if I pay cash? And then sometimes they say yes, and I pay cash. Sometimes they say, no, it's the same price. Then I just pay with my card, okay? Um, debt snowball. And by the way, Vanessa could email this to you all. Ways to eliminate debt is using a debt snowball. So check this out. Reload. All right, so Vanessa, maybe if you could pull it up on your screen and then you can share once you have it up, the debt snowball uh, paperwork, because it's not loading on my, with the link. Um, the next one is stop loaning money to people. This is huge. When I first learned this, I used to let people borrow money and, um, and I didn't want to say no to people because um, I thought they weren't going to like me. So I would let people borrow money. But then the first time I said, hey, look, it, I, I created a new rule for myself. I don't let people borrow money anymore. They just stopped asking. And guess what? They're still my friends. And anytime you let somebody borrow money, uh, the relationship uh, starts to become ruined because of the master-servant relationship that's established. Okay, master-servant relationship. So... Um, the, the borrower is always a servant to the lender. Just remember that. So you don't want to establish that with friends and family. So the best thing to do is just say, hey, look, it, I have a rule. I can't let anybody borrow money. Uh, sorry. And that's it. So that includes, guys, co-signing. Do not co-sign for anyone. All right? Um, and then the last tip to eliminate debt is stop using cash advances you're losing tons of money so if you get your check and you go to the corner store to a cash advance place online or anywhere you're losing money stop doing that all right um vanessa did you pull that up yeah is it the the snowball calculator um not the snowball calculator but the, uh, the actual like worksheet um that um dave ramsey has and we have it in the drive too okay let me pull it up yeah. And let me look at the chat real quick to see if anyone has questions. Uh, yeah. So um, go ahead, pull it up. Jose had a question. I think it's more for Michael though. Okay, cool. Um, and then we're going to introduce Michael in a bit. Um, cool. Yeah, we're going to. Okay. Michael. I'll share my screen. Okay, cool. Perfect. And, and by the way, uh, we're going to have a really awesome guy join us right now, Michael Ayala, who's an expert credit person um could do wonders and he's going to answer that stuff perfect thank you vanessa so scroll down this is a debt snowball sheet it's very simple and this is an example so this is how you eliminate debt i want everyone to put all their debt that they have on this debt snowball sheet and you start listing them your debts from smallest to highest so vanessa if you could yeah highlight that right so if you have a Shell gas card, you have $900, you put that one because that's the lowest. Then you have a Nordstrom card for $1,400, $25, and that's the second lowest. And then the Tiffany Jewelers, $7,200, and then the Jet Ski for $9,100, and then the Honda for $31,000. This is how I want you guys to list your debts. And if you have a house, obviously you put the house usually at the end because that's, that's going to be the biggest debt. And what you want to do to eliminate your debt and use a debt snowball is you write down the minimum payments next to each debt, the minimum payment. So whatever on your monthly statement, it says the, monthly, uh, the minimum payment is, you write it in there. And so what you do is you, you focus and, and the power of focus is huge. We all know that. So you focus on the smallest debt first, okay? Uh, in your mind, because in this example, you have five different debts. You're, you feel like you're in debt, you know, you, you, your body language tells it, you know, you're not as happy walking around throughout the day. So what you want to do is you want to change that by knocking out one debt at a time. So you focus on the smallest one, which is a shell gas card. 
So you put whatever efforts you can into that every single month. So you pay off the minimum payment for all your, your other four expenses, except for the shell gas card. So you keep getting extra money and you pay it towards the shell gas card until you pay it off. Now, with that being said, once the gas card is paid off, then you use that $25 a month minimum that you're, you're using for the gas card. Then you add it to the next uh, smallest bill, which is now Nordstrom's card. So then the Nordstrom's card had a $35 minimum payment. And then you add the $25 that you were using towards the shell gas card. And now your, your new minimum payment for the Nordstrom card is $60 a month. So now you, you're focusing on the Nordstrom's cards and you're paying $60 a month plus anything extra. So even if it's five bucks, 10 bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever you could afford. And you focus until you, you pay off the Nordstrom card a hundred percent. And then once that's paid off, then you use that new, that minimum payment of $60. Then you apply it to the next biggest one of the Tiffany Jewelers, $95. So $95 plus $60, that equals $155. So that's your new payment. So now you're paying the minimum of $95 plus $60 extra towards the principal every single month. And you focus on that one and you pay that one off until you go down to the bottom and then you're debt free. And once you're debt free, guys, trust me, it's the best feeling in the world, right? It's the be absolute best feeling in the world. Now you don't have any, you know, a weight on your shoulders and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't owe anybody any money. It's the best thing. And then from there, then you can start then you can start building wealth and saving money, saving cash, building up, you know, and then purchase your first home or your or, 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 uh, investment properties and stuff like that, um, or investing into the stock market. Um, someone so asked, don't, um, just because I paid off the shell card and then I'm focusing on the other ones, don't start using the shell card again. Don't <laughs> not start using the shell card again. Okay. Don't start building racking up more debt okay you okay. can use it for gas if you're going to pay it down every month to zero but but don't start racking up debt good good point uh, so let's go hit some questions real quick uh what do you think about debt consolidation uh let it go to collector and start rebuilding credit how long does it usually take to rebuild so that's i'm gonna leave that question for our our credit expert did you you did you say you were going to send us debt snowball sheet yes vanessa We'll send it to everyone in the Eventbrite page. Um, and then Laura said, I just did that uh, Zara from 2019 to the beginning of this year. So I'm assuming you're saying that you, you just paid uh, that down. Um, and uh, I think that's what you're saying, Laura. And then uh, there's two replies. All right. Um, cool. Well, we, we could talk about that in a bit. All right. So now let's get back into the uh, presentation. That way we could have... Uh, we could talk about credit next. Okay. So that's the, this is huge. Okay. You guys really have to focus on paying down your debt so we can start building um, wealth. So this is Dave Ramsey's top 25. Um, we already talked about this, uh, but we'll just touch on it. Number one, start cosign, co-signment shopping. So just start buying new stuff instead of new stuff. Um, Two, start couponing. Three, cut the cable, internet, phone, uh, all these unnecessary services. And I've, and I've done that before. And I do that every so often, every couple of years. I go through, well, I do it every month when I look at my personal budget. I'm like, hey, I don't need that. And then I ask uh, my team to just cut it. I'm like, hey, can you, you know, cut this for me, right? Call the whatever subscription it is or email them and say, I don't want it anymore. So you always have to cut unnecessary expenses. Um, four, stop going out to eat. That's a tough one. Um, that would be really hard for me. Um, five, break up with your, with your barista. Six, plan your grocery trips. Uh, so if you have a shopping list and you stick to it, you'll save money. And avoid expensive habits. Um, I was kidding about the kids. Um, <laughs> I'm pro kids, all right? So. <laughs> um, no, it's right. not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 100% pro kids. Uh, uh, what's the one on the right? Find free entertainment. Um, so I always tell a story that for years, I was going Tuesday night movies for $5 and uh, Taco Tuesday was next door. And I would spend about $10 uh, 
every Tuesday. And that was like my entertainment and I was saving money. Uh, the next one, get a side hustle, right? So if you need it, get a side hustle, get it. That we can pay down debt. Three, sell the expensive car. Four, stop investing. So stop investing unless you're debt free. Five, ignore your broke friends. Um, six, tell your kids and family you are on a budget. Again, it's a family budget for a reason. Seven, sell your unneeded items on offer for Craigslist. I've done that before. Um, so uh, let's see, $225 cash advance. So those cash advances cost you 650% annual interest, which is crazy. I don't think people know that. And that's why I'm sharing that with y'all. Um, 90 days, same as cash. Don't do that. 88% of these contracts turn into debt with 24% interest rate minimum. Um, car payments are a way of life. The average millionaire doesn't have car payments because they own used cars. Uh, leasing is always more expensive than owning, right? Dealer profit margins. When you buy a, a property, uh, property, a car cash, they make about $82. When you get a loan, they make $775. When you get a lease, they make $1,300. So the dealers make more money when you lease. All right. So now, uh, uh, by the way, here's a QR code for future stuff. And here's a, card, a QR code so you can rate us on Yelp or Google. Please do this because it helps us. Um, all right. So now, Mr. Uh, Michael Ayala. So, Mr. Michael Ayala, can you introduce yourself? Tell us uh, what you do, what's your specialty? How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Mike Ayala. I'm owner of uh, Five Diamond Credit. Uh, and what I do is basically eliminate all the negative items that are on a credit report, causing the scores, uh, depending on, of course, what you currently have uh, as trade lines that are on your credit report. Um, but essentially, the scores are going to shoot up as the negative items come off the report. Um, and, and in thus, allows you to um, either, you know, purchase a home, which is generally uh, what, what everyone's trying to do. Uh, certainly, uh, you're able to leverage leverage credit um, and, and uh, you're able to leverage your personal credit to, to transfer over to business credit as well, um, which uh, I think that's, that's kind of a, uh, can play a, a big factor for um, uh, a lot of different things of, of like credit usage if you are high in debt. Um, I can kind of go down uh, the list, I guess, of, of some of the questions because uh, they're all, some of them tie into everything. And then certainly um, some of them have their own uh, category or factors uh, that play into everything that um, can help out. Uh, and I think I, I saw one, the last thing I saw was, because uh, we were talking about uh, debt consolidation, which uh, I personally would say like the, I think, uh, is it? Laura used debt relief, uh, freedom debt relief. Uh, you know, I'm in no way allowed to, I guess, tell you what to do. But as far as my opinions, I would say, you know, great that they were able to help you. But certainly, like debt consolidation, and like if you are in debt with creditors um, and you're in collections, I, I personally wouldn't wouldn't go to a company that you're going to end up paying to negotiate for you because you can certainly like, they're not doing anything special. Uh, you can certainly negotiate yourself. Uh, generally time is, is in your favor. So uh, the statute of limitations on collections is four years. So the longer it goes, I've had clients where they said, Hey, after a year, they started, you know, the creditor starts negotiating with themselves because if they can't get a hold of you or, you know, um, you just haven't responded to them they'll start to send you letters that say, hey, we, we'll give you, you know, 20% off if you can pay this today. Or, and, and the time just keeps going because they'd rather collect something than nothing. So like I've had clients where, uh, you know, three years later, they were, they were like, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll do this if you get half off. You know, it's like if you can pay us five grand now uh, for your $10,000, uh, you know, Bank of America collection, if you could pay this for five grand now, we'll, you know, we'll take the five grand. So time is only in your favor. And worst case, uh, I guess at the end of the day, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you owe that debt. So rather you have the opportunity to let that statute of limitations come up. So then 
you're you're you know you get away with out having to pay that debt versus uh, you know and then, and then the worst case is okay they come and serve you which you already knew you had that debt but in the part of credit repair you know i i can in a matter of, of months get uh someone's a client's uh report up to up to par and and somewhere in 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 the you know uh low 700s uh to help them rebuild but they could be rebuilding and then i tell them hey set that money aside that you have for that debt and and worst case again uh they they'll you already know you have to pay that debt best case scenario is that time goes by you don't owe that and now you can use all that those funds that you had to save and put that into property or or you know an, an, an asset um but uh let's see and i think uh what else is there um uh i think that i can't remember was there a credit question i think before I, uh, so so i could i could help uh, so let me just uh kind of premise the conversation too um <laughs> why is credit important credit is very important because that just shows any banks okay that are going to lend you money how responsible you are the more responsible you are the more credit that they'll give you at a better rate, okay? So, for example, me, you look at my credit, it's probably not the highest FICO, right? I'm somewhere around 740 to 760 usually. But the banks see all my credit history, and they go, dude, this guy pays, he has a lot of different loans, business loans, real estate loans, and he pays on time. And he's been consistent for years. So now they want to let me borrow money they're like you want to buy a house you want to buy investment property here's our money and by the way we're going to give you an excellent credit uh, 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 interest rate and then i saved money millions in interest so guess what that means i earn millions in interest that i didn't have to pay so that's why it's so important to have a great credit score um Michael, the question that you're asking is that uh, Jose was asking is, is it a good idea to pay with a credit card and pay it off or have a very small amount of revolving credit to increase your credit score? So um, I tell all my clients, if you can pay off your card uh, every month, do it because you're just saving yourself the interest. You're, you're only paying more money on that item. So it's, it's a huge myth that you need to carry debt on your cards in order for your score to go up so it's it's like for me if i swipe my card on something i pay it you know whatever two days later or whatever whenever it reports on my amex like two days later i just pay that pay that amount off so then i never have to worry about uh you know paying that interest uh uh so that's that's and that is your usage is um plays a, a factor in your in your scores so if your card, uh, let's say, I mean, I've had clients where um, they had two credit cards, they had about a uh, uh, $4,000 credit limit, let's just say they were 2000 on each card, and they were both maxed out. They paid those two cards off, um, and they, they jumped up like 92 points. So usage plays a huge factor on, on when you're going to apply. I mean, obviously, it's imperative when you're going to apply. Uh, for a home loan, we'll say, that, you know, you obviously want to have the highest scores possible with the trade lines you have available on your report. And you want to be, it, it, you know, if you got to carry debt, you got to carry debt. Um, uh, you know, certainly I try to say, hey, be below 20%. But if you can pay off your cards every month, that's going to be the most optimal because then your scores will never change. They'll they'll only keep going up as, as uh, you keep, you know, making pay monthly payments, positive payments month over month and year over year. Um, and they'll just stay the same, but certainly, uh, you know, Hey, uh, life happens and, and, uh, if you got to carry something, you got to carry something. And generally when you're there ready to apply for something, that's when you want to have those zero balances on all your cards. So then you have the highest scores possible, uh, uh, then and, you know, a lender or creditor, whoever's running your credit will. So let me jump in real quick because I don't want to. Uh, I want people to just have very clear, concise um, information answers. So to answer your question, Jose, Michael just said, "Do not hold the balance. That isn't going to help your credit score go up." Okay, so that's a myth. 
Michael just said it's a myth. And if, if you could pay off your balance every single month, do that and your FICO score is gonna be very high. Um, and, and by the way, that's another question um, that maybe some of you guys have. Another myth, Michael, um, you know, I built up my entire real estate portfolio and, you know, all this money with two credit cards, my entire, my, my entire life, you know, up until recently, I got a third for business and stuff like that. But how many credit cards do you recommend somebody has to build up their? The, the sweet spot is about three personal credit cards because uh, business, I think I got about 15 or 20 different business credit cards and, and but they don't play a factor into your personal credit. Score. So personally, uh, uh, like I would recommend everyone to, to certainly, if you have a business, that's great because then again, you could also transfer all that debt. If, if for whatever reason you have the debt, um, a, a great way to do it is, is either get a business credit card, which you don't actually have to have a business in order to get a business credit card. Um, certain certain creditors will give you one and you get one that has a 0% interest for some of them go as high as 21 months. You can transfer a balance transfer of all your personal debt onto that business credit card. And that way you can catch yourself up or allow your ability to make only principal only payments. So then it gives you that 21 months to really try to t tear down that debt that you have. And then you're eliminating all that debt on your personal credit cards. So then now again, your scores are going to be shoot way up because the business credit card doesn't report to your personal credit card. Yeah, that's a, that's a pro tip. I like that. I wasn't expecting that one. So um, three credit cards is a sweet spot to have the best FICO score. And then you said you could use a business credit card if you have a business, obviously, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. To, in order to transfer personal uh, balances. The other option is because credit cards, I mean, especially today, I mean, they've risen their rates just like mortgage with inflation and everything. Mortgage rates are high. Credit card rates right now are around, on average, about 21%. You could go get a personal loan and probably be at maybe half of that. And again, that's just another way where at least if you're going to save maybe 10%, uh, APR, that's another way where, again, you're eliminating because a personal loan comes up on your trade line, but it won't affect your usage. That's, that's only credit cards. So again, you're eliminating all that usage on the credit cards and you're saving, uh, you know, at least uh, some some percentage on the on the interest rate. Cool. Perfect. What questions do you guys have for Michael? Um, now that you have him again, he's a credit expert. You know, one thing, Michael, people have told me is like, you know, should I pay Michael or another company or should I just do it myself? And my answer is like, you know, do you want to give yourself a, a haircut or are you going to go to a barber, right? Because yeah, you could try to do it on your own and stuff like that, but it's going to take away time from your job, from whatever else you're trying to do. Um, for me, I've always, I, I got to learn because I used to do my own stuff too. I used to do like, you know, I thought I was, you know, smarter than I was. And I try to do my own stuff, cut my own hair, you know, per se. And, you know, it's like, it, I, I couldn't never do a great job like a pro. You know what I'm saying? Like like the pro could. So I always think that's a that's a great idea to pay someone um, to help me with that stuff. There's a question. Yes, Kate. Um, thank you so much for this information. It's really, really helpful. So, Michael, I've, I had a client approach me. Um, telling me they have all this debt and then they're saying, I'm just going to file for bankruptcy. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, uh, I, I get this a lot and I've gotten it, you know, probably once a week I get a client, same, same, same thing. It's like, should I apply, uh, you know, file for bankruptcy? And I don't necessarily, I mean, that's a whole nother process to add to like the, the client already probably has all these things in collections. And I would, you know, generally I, I tell the clients, well, you're going to probably spend a couple thousand dollars to go through that process. And then now you're going to have another negative item that will take a lot longer to remove. Um, so generally I tell them, well, you know, 
again, it, it goes back to saying, you know, if they're gonna the the creditors, the original creditor has already done the damage. They put it put you in collection. Um, you know, uh, that's that's done on their part. Then they sell that debt to collectors. The collectors, you've never signed anything with these collectors. They're third party collection companies. You never sign anything. They, it's illegal for the Fair Credit Reporting Act for them to put anything negative onto your credit report. You know, so if they can't, I tell them if they can't call you, if you've changed your phone number, if you've changed addresses, great. Because again, same process where you try to beat out the system by letting the statute of limitations pass. Um, and certainly, I can wipe all those negative collections off. Then they can go and buy the home, uh, and and still it it allows them rather they can save up if for whatever reason again they they'll need to owe those those creditors for uh, if for whatever reason they end up getting served for that for that debt. But the the whole bankruptcy process is going to be a much longer and a much more difficult item to remove off of a credit report. Um, then, then it would to just go through the credit repair process, wipe all that uh, negative item off the report. They're able to, you know, essentially get a second chance and go do what they have to do if it's buying a home. Um, and then, and then at least they know on the side. Well, okay, they can start saving up to where if that client needs to, you know, whatever they get served and they got, they're gonna have to pay that that debt. But uh, uh, yeah, I. I would would certainly advise uh, I guess against it. Got it. Cool. Thanks. Long for that story question. short, no. I yeah. wanted to say from I I work with Voltaire, um, and I've had people bring that up too and say, hey, you know, my relative filed for bankruptcy and they're doing great. And then my following question is, oh, okay, were they able to buy a house? And it's like, oh no, they're still like waiting for time to pass or. They're still in the process of getting back to focusing on saving, but the answer has been no most of the time. So the advice that they're getting this, uh, the people that they're getting this advice from, they're not homeowners and they don't have that goal of becoming a homeowner. So it's how serious are you about that goal of becoming a homeowner? And if you're serious, then no, just clean up the mess you already have before you get into a bigger mess. Yeah, and I, I would add to that is um, they're, whoever's doing the BK, they, they're just doing BKs. They're not, they don't care about you growing your wealth, building your wealth. So if you're serious about building your wealth, look at it closely before you file for BK. Um, but unless like you owe like a ton of money, right? 100,000, 200,000 in credit cards and you, there's no way you're gonna pay it off then you know, it might be a great option for you. but. Uh, ask some experts that have your goals in mind, right? Um, how long will collection stay on your credit report, Michael? Uh, those are seven years and BKs are, are 10. BKs are 10 and then collections are seven? Five. Jeez. Can you get rid of collections once you have them on there, on your credit? Collections, charge offs. Uh, That's what you do? What do I do. That's what you do. All right, cool. Um, awesome. Well, we only have a few more minutes. Um, and uh, and, and uh, a lender said uh, you could you could get an FHA loan two years after a BK, or you could buy, let's say, conventional three years after a BK. So you still could buy. You just you lose market time. What other uh, questions do you guys have about credit or even paying down your debt? Uh, can we get Michael's contact? Yeah, Michael, would you do us a favor and just write it in the chat, please? Uh, I have a quick uh, question for Michael. Just uh, obviously you work or you specialize in this in credit. Um, I cleaned up my credit a few years back when we started these workshops and we had a guest like Michael. And um, there's a difference or there's different types of uh, companies, right? There's the ones that you sign up for and you pay them on a monthly basis to clean up your credit. And then there's um, companies that you pay like a one-time fee and then they work on cleaning up your credit. Uh, I've talked to people that have signed up for the service where it's reoccurring and it's a monthly thing. And I feel like I've heard that they don't get anywhere, which makes sense. Why would I want to 
clean up your credit if you're signed up with me and you're paying me a monthly fee. Um, that's not the kind of service that I got. I paid a one-time fee and they cleaned up my credit. Um, I had gone through a divorce. I kept all of our debt. So I had to hire someone to help me get rid of that debt that went into collections because my goal was to purchase a home. So I hired someone. I think, is it someone like you? Do you do the one-time fee or do you do like a subscription where people sign up and yeah, no, I, so I do a, a one-time flat fee price based on how many items I'm removing off the report. And that's, yeah, you, you kind of, you, you hit that on the spot. And I use like Lexington Law as an example. I mean, they're one of the most widely known companies, but I've had so many clients that come to me after six to eight months of using them and say, oh, you know, I had one thing come off my report. And it's kind of one of those things you get what you pay for, right? It's like, all right, if I'm going to pay somebody $120 a month, you know how they're they're more quantity over quality and they're just trying to get as many subscriptions as they can and that's generally how that process goes with that type of, of model okay yeah. cool yeah. thanks for sharing by the way and, I'll, and and i think that's gonna we're gonna leave on that note with the note of you know vanessa's my sister she started building her credit it, it you know um and and she's been sitting next to me for 13 14 years now or whatever amount of time and she's been hearing me you know talk about these concepts for many years um, but it didn't click for her right away okay so I'll repeat that it did not click for her right away it took years for one day for something to click um, within her to say you know what I'm gonna start building wealth yeah okay what steps do I have to take? And then she goes, okay, well, you know, I've been on, an, on enough workshops where I know I got to pay down my debt first. I know I got to focus on my credit. And then from there, I got to start my, my savings. And then after that, I got to get into real estate and start investing. Um, so for a lot of us on here right now, it might just be another workshop where you just kind of, you know, go through the motions, learn and it's in the back of your head somewhere. And then, and then it might click five years from now when one day you're just like, wait a second, like, I know what I have to do. Let me start working on it. Um, and uh, I don't want you guys to get, you know, into the habit of just learning, 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 never executing. So hopefully it clicks for you guys sooner rather than later. And that way you could have yourself build wealth help your families live a better life, yourself build a, uh, live a better life, your communities live a better life. Um, because, you know, through paying down debt, excellent credit, it allowed me to build a, a portfolio of real estate with 52 tenants that pay me rent every single month. And that allows me to give uh, myself a great life, my family a great life, and then my community, uh, uh, back to my community, uh, or give to my community, sorry. Uh, there's a question, Michael, are you local? He is uh, north of us, but he, he comes to San Diego from time to time, right, Michael? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Newport Beach. Newport Beach. So he's, he's uh, where, where the rich folks uh, are, uh, have great credit. Um, all right. All right, guys. Well, thanks for jumping on. Vanessa will send you guys the, the copy of the uh, Debt Snowball Sheet, along with Michael's information. And if you have any questions about building wealth, buying real estate, please reach out to your favorite Lepe Timo real estate agent. And that way we can help you with that. Thanks for joining. See you on yeah. the next workshop. Please leave us a review. Really quick, uh, Laura, or if you're on here as iPhone, can you send me a direct message with your email? Um, because through Eventbrite, I can't share attachments. So I'm sending you an email directly from, from my um, email. Yes, I'm sending it to you too, Jessica. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Michael. Peace out, guys. Thanks a lot, Michael. Appreciate you. Good night. Peace. All right. I'm jumping off. I'll see you later, uh, Vanessa. Okay, thank you. Good night. All right, good night.